So let's open up the fragment shader, use material mapping if available. So if we are texturing and if we have texture coordinates for this material, we get the shading for the material map coordinates. And we already multiply the occlusion by the X channel, but that's actually not correct. The ambient occlusion is now on the alpha channel of the material map. So instead of using the X here, we're going to say alpha. And then we have the other channels. So the albedo mix is on the R channel. We're going to say the albedo value is going to be a mix of the current albedo to the linear representation of the local texture color. The mix factor is going to be the local material map R channel. Then we have the metallic property. So that's going to be plus is because it works in a relative way. And metallic is going to be minus one to plus one in the green channel of the material map. Local material map dot G roughness is going to be modified by the local material map blue channel. Now what we want to do, because if our texture defines a roughness plus one and the roughness was already plus one, it's going to be a huge value. So we're going to say clip material properties. Let's run with this. Let's see what happens. The nails in the textures, as you can see, they are now gray. Whoa. There's a bit of a problem going on with some of the shading on the wood itself. So the problem with this is that if pixels are transparent in the original PNG file, we apply this matte process. So basically we want to remove matting at all. I think we can just remove all of this code. There we go. Boom, it's gone. We need to load the PNG file without having to mat it. So let's run it. Gray nails in the wood everywhere. So I believe we are working, but we can debug this a bit better. So let's output the fragment color to be the metallic property. So we're going to use metallic here and just make it effect three of metallic. Metallic factor, there we go. So everything that's not metallic will be black. Everything that is metallic will be white. It's good that we debug this. We can now see that the wood is suddenly picking up some metallic value. And I already know why. Instead of just plainly adding this, we have to multiply by 2 and then we subtract 1.0 from that. And the same holds for the roughness here. So we can just copy this equation over and then use the, the blue channel. The wooden planks are now back to being non-metallic. The nails are now super metallic. Now you can finally see the metallic property sort of come to light here. The nails definitely get this very nice highlight going. We can make base textures for all of the other materials. Now the background of the roofing tiles is going to be more rough. They have the roughness factor of tiles, 0 0.2. So we kind of want to add 0.55 to that. So let's open up our calculator application that we just wrote. There we go, 197.6. And we're going to assign that to the roughness channel, 198. If all goes well, the roofing tiles are still very shiny. They have veneer on them, but the background is going to be more like stone. Yeah, so very bright tiles and we can't almost see the in-between portions. A nice specular highlight, nice specular highlight on the tiles and not on the background anymore. 